Hey, what's up? It's Adrian from ProductionCrate.com. And I'm Chris, also with ProductionCrate.com. Today, we're going to tell you all about our new burning transitions. These were shot practically. We actually lit some paper on fire in front of a blue screen and recorded it in glorious 4K resolution for all you creators out there to use and enjoy. We're going to show you how to use these in After Effects as well as Premiere, and it's going to be very simple. That's right, here we've got a timeline with two pieces of footage. They're actually just still frames of some very handsome men, but obviously you can use any kind of footage you want. If you have less handsome men, that's fine too, it'll still work. <laughs> we just need to grab the transition clip itself and drag it onto the timeline, and we're gonna move it up to track number three. Then we're gonna move our first footage clip, in this case it's Chris, up to track number two, and then the second footage, that one's Nico in this case, we're gonna drag it backwards enough so that it overlaps for the duration of the transition. Then over in the effects panel, we wanna search up an effect called Track Matte Key. Go ahead and grab that and drop it onto our first clip. Over in the effects controls panel, we make sure that composite using Matte Alpha. Matt that didn't feel right. Matt Alpha. Sounds like the European way of saying alpha mat. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make sure that's selected, okay? And for the matte layer, we select video three. Cool, 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 cool. If we play through <laughs> that, we can see that the transition is now working, but the flames are all gone. That That's not cool. I guess it is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's cool, I could fix it. In the timeline itself, just select the transition clip, hold down Alt and drag it up to make another copy. Now our flames are back. Oh wait, but you can't see See through them. A lot of problems. I uh, don't worry, I can take care of that. In the effects controls panel under opacity, just change the blend mode to screen. Hey, great, that did it. Good job, it's working now. But real quick, we're gonna run you through another scenario just in case you need it. With a more complex edit, it might not actually make sense for you to have your first clip on top. You might have to have it the other way around. So here's what we're gonna do in that situation. Instead of putting the track matte key on the first clip, we're gonna put it on the second clip. And once again, we're just gonna select video three. Now it's working again, but it's backwards. So we need to check the reverse checkbox and now it's fixed. The only problem is now Nico disappears at the end, which really sucks because he's a good guy to have around. That's true. Let's just grab the razor tool and cut the clip at the end of the transition and just delete the track matte key effect off of that second clip and now it's fixed. Great job. We're just gonna hit control Z a few times to return to that simpler setup. We could totally leave it here and it's fine. But one thing we could do to help sell the transition a bit better is to darken the first clip because things turn black as they burn. They do. Let's go ahead and move in the timeline to the point where the cracks in the paper first start appearing. Go ahead and pop open Lumetri color tab and just change something real quick. It could be anything and that's gonna cause Premiere to add Lumetri as an effect. Then we can undo whatever we just did. But now that Lumetri is in the effects controls panel, we can start adding some keyframes. So we're gonna set a keyframe next to exposure, okay? And we're gonna move forward until Chris is almost gone. And we're gonna turn the exposure down to darken that clip up. Now, as it burns away, it gets darker as well, which actually puts more focus on Nico's face. So darkening makes more sense as far as actual, you know, burning goes, but it also makes the transition serve its purpose a bit better because it doesn't detract from the attention of the clip that it's transitioning into. We can ease those keyframes as well because we're not a bunch of animals. You can also use Lumetri on the flames themselves if you want to tweak the color. Under the curves tab, you can find the hue versus hue curves and use it to turn the flames pink or whatever you want, if that's what you want to do. Actually, pink looks pretty good. <laughs> it does. So that's the basics of how to use the fire transitions in Premiere. Next, we can move over to After Effects for a more advanced example. All right, so here we are with basically the same setup we had in Premiere, but now it's in After Effects. We'll grab that burning transition, drag it in, and we'll very politely ask the me clip to <laughs> use it as an alpha mat. Alpha mat. Alpha mat. Oh, Craters, alpha. we can't hear you. <laughs> alpha mat. <laughs> Doing that has caused the burning transition layer to poke out its own eye and become invisible. So we can fix that by just, you know, poking the eye back in. Hmm. I, I don't like that. 
<laughs> anyway, we're gonna set that to a screen transfer mode and now it's fixed, awesome. This is basically the same thing we had in Premiere, but wow, that was way faster. Let's see what else we can do to take this to the next level. First of all, we do want that darkening effect, but instead of using exposure, let's go for a turbulent noise and drop that onto the first clip. Since we're working in 4K resolution, the noise actually looks pretty small. So let's scale it up until it's about the size you'd expect burns on the paper to be. We'll turn up the contrast a bit, but don't go too crazy. Come on now, crazy craters. Shucks. <laughs> Turn the brightness up until it clips to white and set a keyframe. Move forward until the transition is almost over and turn the brightness down until it's almost black. It doesn't have to be all the way black. That's just going to be personal preference. We'll change the blending mode of the turbulent noise effect itself to multiply. Oh, and easy is those keyframes, you filthy animal. Easy. Here's what that looks like. It looks more like an actual burn. Next, let's see if we can make it look more like the footage of me is actually getting crumpled as it burns up. We're not actually going to try and track the footage on the paper. That's just ridiculous. ridiculous. Hey, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> Woo, cool. <laughs> we can fake the look of it, though, with turbulent displace. We'll turn up the size to match up roughly with the scale of the paper. <laughs> look, at your, look at your funny face, dude. It is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, we're going to turn the amount to zero, fix Chris's face, and we're going to set a keyframe for the amount and for the size. We're going to move forward in time and turn the amount up until the footage starts to look wrinkly. We'll turn off the other effects right now just so you can see what we're doing. We're going to turn the amount up until it starts looking like crumpled paper like we said, and we're going to turn the size up a bit as well. Oh, hey, Chris, you look buff now, dude. Ooh, a lot of plastic surgery going on in this episode. Nice. So right now, as we turn up our size, the noise scales from the middle, and that's great because of the transition that we picked. The paper splits right up the middle, but if you picked one that's more off-center, you might want to move the offset turbulence to match that. Let's turn off all of our other effects back on and see what we got. Looking good. Next, we wanna add some highlights here on the edges to help sell the idea that this is a 3D piece of paper. Let's apply CC glass and set the surface bump as the transition itself, and then play with those settings until you get what you want. We're gonna want some highlights, but also some displacement around the edges as well, so they kinda look like they're curling up. On the transition clip, the flames do have some alpha to them, so using this clip as an alpha Alpha mat. Alpha mat. <laughs> Technically causes some defects where you can see the original clip right through them. To be honest, we can't actually see this happening at all, but fixing it will help with the next several steps. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. Let's disable the alpha mat. Oh, and I'm, I'm sorry to see it go to um on that Chris clip. And we're gonna add an effect called set mat. Not the same ring to it, you know? Hmm. We're gonna select the burning transition as our mat. Now it looks exactly the same, but After Effects is just achieving this look in a different different way. So now we can add a levels effect and set the channel to alpha and then choke it in a little bit so that the flames are no longer showing up and we're just getting a somewhat harder edge around the paper. And that's going to allow us to do a few more things. For example, we can add a drop shadow effect to help sell the 3D-ness of it all. Drop shadows are pretty controversial. I like them. Adrian <laughs> likes them. I don't really. So use them if you like them. Don't if you don't. Here, we're going to have the drop shadow pretty strong at the start, but it's going to fade out over time. Time, just add a tiny bit more depth at the beginning of the transition. And again, this is something we wouldn't as easily have been able to do using the normal alpha mat workflow. Next, we're actually gonna add a layer style. Did you even know that After Effects has Photoshop layer styles? Did you even know? Yeah, I've used it once, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, we try and avoid them because they run a lot slower than effects. But in this situation, the inner glow layer style is exactly what we need. We're gonna turn the size of it up so we can see what it actually does. It's just adding a nice looking glow to the inner edge of our paper, but we don't want this to be a glow. We want it to be a charred edge. So we're gonna change the color to black. And that's gonna make it disappear because by default, the inner glow is on a screen transfer mode. So we should change that to either normal or multiply. They should look the exact same since we're dealing with black. And as always, just play with the settings until you get exactly what you want. We're gonna keyframe the opacity of it over time. So we start with no burnt edges at all, but then it gets blacker as we go. And that's it for the transition if you just want normal fire. But if you wanna color correct your fire, you totally can. You can add a curves to brighten it, but since it does have an alpha channel, that doesn't really play nice with the curves. So just add a solid composite and then drop that to be before the curves and make it black and that'll make it work better. You can also add a glow if you wanna do that. And you can even 
even use a hue and saturation effect to get some colored flames. Green flame? Sure, why not? That's pretty cool. Or should I say green warm? Should I? Nah. Maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> None of that is necessary for us, actually, because we do like the look of the flames as they are. But it's just so you know that your options for customization are basically endless. Now, what if you're doing a video and you need a lot of fire transitions? That wasn't too bad for just one, but over time, these steps are gonna add up and it's gonna be a lot of work. If you're a production grade pro member, check the description of this video and you'll find that we have this project file available to download and use as many times as you want. It's set up a little more clean as well. Just drop your footage into the footage one and footage two pre-comps and you will be good to go. If you wanna swap the fire transition for another, all you gotta do is just select the layer, select the alternative transition from the project panel, hold alt, drag it to replace, and everything's gonna update. And that's it for us today. Let us know what you think of the fire transitions or let us know what other effects you would like to see in the future in the comments below. Until next time, make it awesome. Make it awesome. Later, creators.